What's up, Twitch.tv Pokemon ABL fans? My name is Gershag, and welcome to ABL Prime Time for Week Eight. We are joined by Perk Hayes. I'm Perk. Hey, what's up? What's up, man? How are you doing? What's going on, dude? How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, let me just make sure all your audio is rocking very well. All right. In the background. I'll That's try not to perfect. mess everything up. You just broke everything. No, I'm just kidding. All right, guys. I tend to do that. <laughs> uh, if you guys have not watched a prime time before, this is this is the show where no, uh, we're gonna basically be covering what happened last week in Pokemon ABL. We're gonna be watching a battle live. We're gonna be commentating both Perk and I on today's battle, which is gonna be the Cuerda Navaca Cyndaquils versus the Dashing Dittos, uh, two very good teams from the Bravo division, the Beta division. I say Bravo just because letters in military. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, yeah, I got you. Alpha Bravo Charlie. Um, and yes, sir. We're going to be giving away a power plays <laughs> today. So all that stuff is mighty fine and dandy. However, we did start a little bit early. So I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a teaser of something. And then I'll give it to you guys at the end again. Um, if you guys missed it on Twitter today, uh, the Pokemon ABL tweeted this out, which says, Who wants to participate in hashtag Pokemon ABL? Eyeball emoji. Shh. Emoji. <laughs> Um, do you know what this is about, Perk? Because I have no idea what this is about. I've never seen this before in my life. I don't know who the heck got onto our Pokemon ABL. Somebody's Twitter. hacked the ABL official Twitter account. Somebody's hacked the main for No, but basically, <laughs> um, we have a shuffle coming this week, correct? Yes, Perk? we do. So this is the last week before the final shuffle. For those of you guys that don't know what a shuffle is, um, the Pokemon ABL Amateur Battle League signature i guess feature for this season is the dynamic shuffle system which is basically a, a system where every coach is just going to have four weeks worth of scheduled matches they'll, they'll have the schedule for four weeks every four weeks it'll rotate and put you in uh win-loss divisions basically kind of like swiss rounds in vgc uh, where you just play people with your same win-loss record more more likely uh, more or less likely around there um that's what the abl tends to do for this season it's been working out great so this is the last week before we hit that final shuffle um and basically throughout that the, the the final four week span of prime time and the regular season we'll be announcing a special a special project coming up for those that want to participate in the pokemon abl so we yes. can't say anything yet but there trust me we will announce when we're announcing it on the Pokemon ABL Twitter with like a, hey, don't forget to miss prime time. There will be a special announcement or something. We'll make it very clear for you guys to know to just tune in. <laughs> That's right. Don't right? forget to miss prime time, he says. Don't forget to miss prime time. <laughs> don't forget to skip this one. <laughs> so basically all the ones that we don't mention anything about you guys can skip. Just watch it on YouTube and so on and so forth. But with that being said, um, let's talk about a quick rundown on what happened this week, right? So basically, uh, running down from Alpha Division, we had the St. Hubert's Castaways getting their first loss. That's right. They got the first loss, man. It was it was rough. I was there. I saw it. Yeah, I, I did too. <laughs> I was there. I was there in the flesh. I saw. Well, I, really, I, I, I seen it happen. No, I, um, I seen it. <laughs> I seen it. The San Juan Frogies <laughs> took on the St. Hubert's Castaways. Uh, my team, the the Frogies, uh, getting the W, uh, stopping the undefeated team. So now there are no undefeated teams in the abl and this is the power of the dynamic shuffle system kind of like in place this is basically what we wanted to accomplish with the system where it was no one is yeah. overpowered no one is underpowered basically exactly um there's no teams with a, a zero x record and there's no teams with a x zero record you know everybody has a win everybody has a loss at some point um so st hubert's castaway is getting their first loss the houston team rockets you guys saw it on last prime time getting their first loss as well so two teams falling in the same week, losing their undefeated records. Um, Lansing Leafions being uh, the one defeating the Houston Team Rockets at 5-2. and two. Miami Dawn fans at 4-2. and two. Uh, They still haven't played their match against the Vancouver Corvinites. They have an extension going through. Uh, and then San Juan Froki is my team at 4-3 and three right now. Moving on to Beta Division, uh, we do have the Cuernavaca Syndicals at 5-2. and two. Boston Grambles at 4-3. and three. Dashing Dittos at 4 and 3, Manchester Mimikyu's at 3 and 4, Corpus Christi Cubus at 3 and 4, Everton and Polion's at 2 and 5. Uh, then rocking over to the Gamma Division, we have the Copenhagen Canines at 3 and 4, Maryland Tor Terrapins at 3 and 4, making a great, you know, stride to a comeback. Um, going from that from, from that 0 and 4, I think they started. Now they're 3 and 4. Um, yeah. Then we have the Trenton Trevenants at 2 and 5, Blackthorn Frogs at 2 and 5, Phoenix Soul Rocks getting their first win this week at 1 and 6, and the Little Rock Lucarios at 1 and 6 as well. So, 
what do you think about what happened this 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 week this week was crazy honestly like having two undefeated teams losing the same week i mean I that's that's wild and i, I i'm gonna be honest i'm a little bummed because i was looking forward to hopefully seeing the two of them stay undefeated and then play each other but yep. at the same time you know almighty kingdoms must fall no. and uh you know, it just happened a little early that's all that is correct now we do have one match we want to go over today and that match yes. do you know which match this is i do which one is it? My match. <laughs> Before we dive into it, what do, you, do you have anything to say about this match? Uh, yeah. Uh, obviously, under the radar is a huge cheater. I think everybody knows that. Oh, God. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, going into this battle, uh, like, he had recently activated his um, ability to use friend guard on clefairy so i knew that was coming yeah um what i did not expect or i guess i did it a little bit there was a part of me that was like this could happen and if it does i just don't know what to do um and it's exactly what ends up happening and he puts out the age slash with the clefairy yep in the same turn mm -hmm. um which is just so scary i mean like the problem with this setup is that like Aegislash has King Shield, obviously. Um, Clefairy having Friend Guard, which is going to reduce, you know, uh, the damage that the Aegislash takes. If it even does, it also has Follow Me. They, you know, has Protect. Yep. So it's just a matter of like, okay, where do I, where do I attack? What do I want to hit? Do I go for the obvious hit? Do I not go for the obvious hit? So like in this situation, I was like, okay, let me kill the Clefairy. So I doubled in, and he protected. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's just like. <laughs> You don't know because you could think like, okay, he could King Shield turn one, you know. Yep. If no. he wants to. No, a hundred percent. And like, just like you were saying, that lead is honestly like I think for your team such a good lead because here's the thing, right? You know, he could set up with the Aegislash Slash if he wants to. First off, it's not going to take as much damage, and then you got to start predicting the King Shield shenanigans, and then Clefairy yeah. being right there, usually rocking an Eevee Light, and then with Friend Guard that was recently activated, you're like. I want to take this thing down because we're, I want to take both things down, honestly, because yeah. these things are just stupid, both of them together. Um, yeah, yeah. And it being a doubles league, you know, you can't afford to just let either one of them up. Like, you, you, if you look at a team and you look at a team comp and you, you're like, okay, so these are the two mons I need to take out and the rest of the team is not that bad. But they're both up at the same time and they can both benefit from you not tackling, uh, attacking one or the other. What are you going to do? <laughs> and I think this yeah. is the, the perfect like explanation of what happens you know you're either going to let one set up on you or the other one is just going to make it so much harder for you to take the other one out um and uh, we got an ad here so you guys if you guys need soap <laughs> there you go um, watch. <laughs> yeah but that's the thing right is like it becomes a guessing game because it's like you know who do i hit maybe i can knock off the evia light can't do it um you know and it's just like you know i'm thinking in my head that one time i don't go for Aegislash slash when he just you know came off attacking mm -hmm. he's not going to use king shield exactly you know what i mean and it's like and then he ends up doing it and it's just i predicted wrong on like almost every turn yeah um which was just like really just bad luck i mean i don't know that it's necessarily a misplay i don't feel like it was just because like you just don't know because the thing is like Technically, Aegislash can attack, and then Clefairy can just use Follow Me. He doesn't even need to protect. Yep. You know what I mean? So it doesn't even matter if I guess right. I could still be wrong. Yep. And that's exactly you know? what happens, for example, here. You know, here's a Follow Me. Now yeah. you're stuck attacking this Clefairy, which can take a Scald from your <laughs> from your Inteleon. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, it doesn't like, even get the burn. It's it, it just, it just so... <laughs> it's just so so troublesome for you to, to have to deal with something like that and honestly it puts you just yeah. in, this, in this such an awkward position to be in really um and i guess it's just hard to play around like if i were in that situation i wouldn't know what to do personally yeah because um, i mean he has so much type coverage with the, those two mons and not just that um, but he has a valley in the back that he could just you know prep to whatever he needs pretty much you know? yeah like, and at this point i didn't even know I didn't even know what he was going to bring. You know, I had no idea because it's like really, I don't know what he feels like is the biggest threat. I can sit there all day and look at my team and know what it is. Yeah. That doesn't necessarily mean that he feels like it is. Exactly. Oh. 100%. So, yeah, it was it was a tough matchup. But, you know, honestly, once we once I got um, like one of these guys off the field, I, you know, was able to pick up a couple kills, at least sort of balance out the differential a tiny bit. But, you know. Yeah, no. But, yeah, once he has that momentum going and, you know, just – Again, 
We're not talking about somebody that's unexperienced in draft leagues. I mean, maybe in doubles if you want to say that, but just the, the sheer amount of experience in the past and coming into this, picking up a team that is not their team and honestly, one of the more questionable team comps, like drafted teams that were in the in the league, you know, and yeah. him just saying, you know what, I'm going to make this work. And making it work, like, it's just very impressive um, to say the least. Yeah. Um, and with that said, though, it's going to be a quick one today, guys. But with that said, though, um, I think it goes no surprise that Kelly will be getting the uh, power plays for this week. Uh, so we will, uh, the ABO will be in contact with Kelly uh, anywhere from now to the weekend, and we'll get in touch. But, yeah, congratulations to the Maryland Terrapins. Um, very, very well played. They're on a streak. You know, they haven't yeah. lost a match three, since they started. 3-0 and o since they came in. Yeah, since they came in. Obviously, that doesn't mean that they're 3-0. and o, They're just 3-4. and four, But since they came in, they haven't lost a match, which says a lot. If they win their next match, that might as well put them in beta division. And if they go yep. undefeated in beta division, I'm pretty sure they can make it into playoffs. And, yeah. And obviously, yeah. that also depends on the people in alpha division, how they play, which, as we've seen, no one is safe. Everybody can get a loss. Yeah, absolutely. So with that being said, I think um, we should just go ahead and talk about what we're going to be doing right now, what, what we're going to be watching coming up right now. We have a match again uh, between the Cuernavaca Cyndaquils and the Dashing Dittos. Two yes. very good teams. One team that's been a little bit more dominant than the other, but this other team just from the beginning taking every battle as, 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 a, as a lecture, as a class, and then learning from it and putting it into practice and and outperforming every other week yeah yeah just getting better and better constantly so what do you expect to see here um well so the thing is i think um the uh the cynicals they have such a dangerous team um because yeah. they have so many options to play with um uh, having a ranguru having hatterene having sableye i mean you have a lot of weapons a lot of a lot of tricks you can play on your opponent, mm -hmm. which makes it really hard to prep for because you don't know what he's going to do. He could prep, he could play trick room, he could not play trick room. Um, so it's tough. But on the other hand, uh, Teichichu also has G Max Garbador as their captain, which just bops Hatterene. So I mean, like being able to remove that huge threat is is like massive. Um, yeah, and it could go out of the way. Really, there's also a Dracovish on the dashing dittos. You know, what yeah, I'm saying? yeah, like, Dracovish gets, obviously always going. scary. You know, the the Cuernavaca Syndicals being a slower team. You know, that Dracovish can just come in and start vicious rending everything left and right. You know, yeah. and then um, Soy doesn't really want to set up a rain dance to get that swift swim on on Seismitoad because Dracovish loves it. Yeah, and he'd rather run like a water absorb on, on the on the Seismitoad. So so it's gonna be interesting to see what these two coaches bring in. Um, it's going to be very fun to see what they do bring in. But before we do that, I want to show you guys. I know there's a picture going down in like the slideshow there, but you know, you guys can win this trophy if you just win the league. <laughs> just win the league. That's just easy. Just win the league. That's all it takes. All you got to do is win the league. No, um, there's some prizes ro uh, rolling around on the screen right now. Um, part of the first place prize, part of the first place prize is that trophy right there, the season three champion trophy, uh, shaped like Duraludon. We, we, we commissioned the trophy before Pokemon was released. So we, we had mm -hmm. some insider knowledge on Duraludon beforehand. Um, yep. you didn't hear from me. You um, said, give us your finest Duraludon <laughs> glass. Uh, but with that being said, uh, again, there are prizes for first, second, and the exceptional content creator, which by the way, we can't announce that today. The exceptional content creator will be named in the final prime time for the regular yes, season. Yes, which will be the championship. No, for the, for the regular season. So like, Oh, regular we, season. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, so, my, so my for bad. For the final prime time, we'll announce <laughs> the exceptional content creator, and then playoffs will go on, and then first and second, we'll know when, when we get to them, obviously, because they'll be playing the final match. Yep. Um, with that being said, are you ready for this, uh, this match? Absolutely. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, let's get it on. All right, so we've got Soy Salomon Star. Right here, uh, his side of the match, of course. Uh, it's muted. Make sure this is how we basically <clears throat> do the battles every single time. Uh, these matchups are muted when we watch them and we, when we narrate over them. And then, you know, you guys can catch the, the, the trainer's version over on their channel once they upload them. Um, right off the bat, we see a weakness policy. Uh, Hatterene, Sableye. We got the Bisharp. Okay, so we got a pretty decent team here. Um, yeah. I'm excited to see uh, Delmice in action. I think Delmice is a super cool Pokemon that's a little underappreciated. Yeah, it does um, seem to me that he might be trying to rock a Trick Room, potentially, because, again, Hatterene is slow. 
uh, Del Mines is pretty slow. Uh, and then the Oranguru being there, I'm assuming, wants to set up a trick room, correct? I would imagine so. I mean, looking at the team, um, there's definitely a possibility for it, especially against the team that he's playing. I don't know that it's going to be... And Tai Chi Chu has it'll be, a it'll be helpful, but it won't be. Team with, uh, it, I mean, obviously, the Escalade being mix. slow, but there's a good mix there just in case there is a trick room coming in, which I, I assume there's a trick room coming in. Yeah, I would imagine, like, you know, if Trick Room gets set up and she has Garbodor and Excavalier on the field, like, she's, you know, yeah. be sitting pretty, you know. No, for sure. Let's see Let's see what, what these trainers lead off with. Um, so we see Tai Chi Chu lead off with the Nine Tails and the beautiful Morpeko. And then we have the Sableye Hatterene combo, which the if you guys have seen lead. the team report, uh, the, the Cuernavaca Syndicals love this combination right here just because Sableye's Prankster lets it do pretty much anything it wants. Um, yeah, it basically allows the Hatterene to just run rampant here. Um, now, so we're probably we're gonna see that Max Ferry move into the more Peko slot. Not surprising. We'll probably see either a quash here or potentially uh, a quash on the Nine Tails since he can't really hit the more Pico being a dark type with Prankster. So there might yeah. be like a quash or something going on that side. I'm not sure. I, I didn't get to read what he's running. It, the, the game is in Spanish, being on soy side, but luckily enough, I can translate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it so he does help. go for that max, like we, we said. And you said he was going for the more Pico slot, correct? Yes. So if it lands, I'm assuming it's going to be a one-shot. I don't think more Pico lives it unless it's rocking like a I would have stash. to assume. It depends on how the Hatterene is probably uh, built out and how the more Pico is built out, but I would imagine it probably one-shots. Yeah. I, don't I mean, that's a 140 base power move probably. Yeah, and I'm not so. running any sort of like, uh, you know, Calx over here on this end. We're just watching the match, you know what I'm saying? So you we see a nice pat on the doggo there. Oh, that that's actually crit. some pretty good damage. That oh, it was a crit, yeah. Yep. 100% Critical. Crit there. And then here we go for that uh, fairy. Uh, okay, so we do hit the more Pico. Do, does it knock out? It does. It, oh, it is does. that a sash? Wait. I think that's a sash, though. That is a yep, sash. Yep, it is. So that was a very, very good setup uh, sash there for on her part. And then we see the confusion on both Mons. And, and Soy rocking that cheeky confusion strategy. Um, yeah. It's going to be so difficult. There's the first hit yep. on the Ninetales. Oh, that's going to be such Super a... Super frustrating for yes, sure. Definitely. 100%. Uh, more Pico... Uh, now going into its 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 hangry mode, which means that the I forget the name Aura Wheel is it right? Aura yes. Wheel? Uh, or, is like now Wheel. A, yeah, it's a dark type move now instead of an electric move. So which it's it's always good, but I don't think it really will benefit that much. Uh, it only did that much on the I don't think that was a move it used. It probably was the move it used um, on the Hatterene because it was a crit. <clears throat> um, so I don't know what she does right now. I probably focus on that Sableye right now. Uh, considering that Hatterene has two more turns of Dynamax, and you know there's not really much you're gonna be able to do with it. Yeah, and and Soy pretty much just gonna say, let me go ahead and run it back. Mm -hmm. He's just gonna do the same thing again, except for he's going into the Nine Tail slot this time. And there's the R wheel on the Hatterene, which brings it pretty low. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, without the crit, it does pretty good damage. Still not yep. amazing, but definitely not bad. 100. And there's the knockout on the Nine Tails, uh, and then setting up that terrain as well. Uh, so I believe that was a psychic move. So now he's boosted his psychic. Uh, yeah, exactly. Psychic moves. So Soy running some very, Ooh, very good strategies that's here. A, that's frustrating right there. You're going to yeah. see the nine tails knock itself out. Yep. Definitely uh, frustrating for sure. And more Pico is still, still trying to rock it. You know what I'm saying? More Pico is saying, I'm not, I'm not giving up. I got this one HP and I'm going to use it. <laughs> he's still pretty quick. That's the thing, you know, more, more Pico is pretty fast. And yeah, the he's only getting thing that here speed is like, every single time you use that aura wheel. So if you don't keep it in check, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, and the thing that kind of sucks is like, you know, you don't really want to waste a Gigantamax attack on a Pokemon that has one health, yeah. but at the same time, you know, leaving those Mons on the field and not taking care of them and using your other Pokemon to use Quash, mm -hmm. you know, it allows them an opportunity to just do more damage than they would have done otherwise. Yeah, but more Pico's at the, at the stage right now, you know, he, he's, it outspeeds every single one of Soy's Mons, but Soy probably is rocking like Sucker Punch on on maybe like uh, Bisharp, so he Most probably likely. doesn't really care about that speed uh, boost. And then yeah. Sableye really can't do anything with Prankster on the more Pico, but more Pico has one HP, so what is more Pico gonna do to soy right now you know what i'm saying um yeah so i think soy focuses on that mimic you now and tries to take away its disguise and then tries to double down 
on that thing, try to get some damage on it. Um, and then maybe he relies, I don't know if he's still confused or not, and maybe Ooh. he just relies on this thing to just uh, knock itself out. So he goes for, he doubles up into that Mimikyu slot, yeah. trying to take that thing down quick. Yeah. Let's see if it gets confused. Oh, it, it does. It does that's, get the confusion, oh, yeah. Oh, that's three confused hits in a row. Yeah. So that's was, frustrating. Yeah, that's, that's going to be very, very frustrating for sure. And, he, you know, Soy's in a, in a very, very good position right now. You know, having two yeah. Pokemon knocked out on the opponent's side, still not losing any of his Mons. And the fact that now he has free control over most of the field, unless if somehow uh, the, the Dashing Dittos can find a way to bring in that um, uh, Dracovish once this Dynamax goes down. I think so that we're would gonna be see a, the a good position. Down. And now he's going to be now uh they're going to be able to Gigantamax this uh the Garbine and uh you know that should that should hopefully allow them to live a hit and get some damage off. But I don't know though too because the Hatterene's now boosted so yeah. But I did he I didn't see he didn't get a set up a set up a trick room. No one has set up a trick room, right? No, no trick room yet. So Garbodor should be faster than the, the Hatterene. But it's definitely a possibility. <laughs> I, I I did not. So he goes ahead and switches out the save lie, trying to save that for later. Probably gonna try to do some quash shenanigans to save the uh you know, save the Dracovish from doing anything. He double doubles out. Yeah. Which is surprising. Doubling out in a doubles battle is it's definitely so risky because you know so you're gonna dangerous. take damage. It is so dangerous. Um, maybe I'm, I'm predicting here. Maybe what he's trying to do is trying to predict, you know, that Garbodor going for that Hatterene slot with its uh, max yeah. poison move, and just switching that Steel type in there. Probably not getting any damage from that. I think maybe that's exactly. what he's trying to go for. Um, yeah. So probably. we'll see it play out here in a second. Which I mean is a good play because you know what's going to happen. Yeah, and there's a play rough from that Mimikyu hitting that Karangu with a crit. With a crit. That's really good. Some that RNG is bringing it back around. Yep, it definitely is. And there, yeah, it, it doesn't affect the, the steel type. So, yeah, that was a great switch on Soy's end. Uh, again, now he should be pretty free to hit that Iron Head on the Mimikyu and probably set up a Trick Room, potentially, if the Garbodor wants to focus on the Bisharp, like with maybe like a Max Knuckle to get that quad uh, super effective damage, boost its attack. Uh, it will yeah. leave Soy with that spot to set up a Trick Room and then not have to worry about the Dracovish outspeeding anything on his team, uh, which would be really good because then he doesn't have to rely on the uh, Sableye to quash the Dracovish. And we're going to see him go down here. So there's no Trick Room being activated, but he again, he still does have the uh, the quash Sableye in the back. And here is the ground type uh, max move. So hitting for some good damage Ooh. on that Bisharp. Very good, but not enough to secure the knockout. So that's going to be somewhat unfortunate as well. But he do, she will get the boost. Um, so she will get that uh, defense boost, or special defense boost. Uh, yeah. So not that it's going to help much on the Mimikyu's end. That Iron Head is going to be enough to knock it out. And now Teichichi is down to her final three mons. So what do you think comes in here? I would say... I would say... I, I would personally send in the Dracovish right now. There is no Trick Room set up, so I would send in D the Dracovish. Um, yeah. Is Cavalier is a little bit too slow uh, right now, in my opinion. And then, you know, you send in Dracovish. You try to knock out maybe the Bisharp. Bisharp could go for maybe... I didn't see... I don't remember, rather, if it has a Sucker Punch or not. But I would personally just go in with the Dracovish here. Um, and try yeah, because, I mean, worst Cavalier case scenario, then you, you force Soy to go into the Sableye to have to quash it in order to keep it under wraps, but that means he can only attack on one Mon, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, so we'll see what happens here. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so he's going to protect on the Bisharp, which is all really good. Uh, a really good uh, play there. Uh, I think the Garbodor probably wants to probably... I mean, if it has a poison move, I would probably go from the guard of, uh, from the Garbodor straight into the Delmize for that super effective yeah. damage, um, because a Delmize that's unchecked can also be very scary. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll see what Teichichu decides to do here. This Cavalier being very, very strong, Mon, just just very slow, really. So hopefully she can find a way to make this Cavalier make some plays because again, she's not in a really good position right now. Yeah. So we see the Protect from the Bisharp. Uh, we're going to go ahead and see Teichichu go for Protect on his Cavalier, which is actually a really decent play here. Not bad at all. And then we see a Max Knuckle coming in from the Garbodor, hitting the Bisharp for that quasi-perfective damage, getting the knockout, and boosting its attack. 
which yeah, is that's a huge. very good play because that this Cavalier is going to love it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, now the thing is plus attack. I mean, if it gets a hit, I mean, it's pretty much knocking out whatever. So here's that uh, Earthquake coming in from the Delmize. It's going to do some good damage on that Garbodor. Wow. Again, this that's thing surprising. is choice banded, if I'm not mistaken. So that's going to do some massive damage onto that Garbodor slot. Yeah. I'm surprised to see it do so much. I mean, like, yeah, especially it being it being it being max. Dang. hundred percent. Now, Soy considering bringing in the Vanillux, uh, probably trying to get the, probably rocking some hail, maybe. Yep. Potentially, here. yeah. Here it is. So we see that the, the Vanillux is um, uh, sashed. We did see that. So we have a sashed Vanillux, a choice banded uh, Delmize, and now. What do you think Tai Chichu does here, really? Because she's in a position to make a comeback. She still has Dracovish in the back, which is great. Yeah, for sure. I, I think I think you want to get that Exc Excavalier on the uh, on the Delmise, probably. Just because you know that um, Vanillox is probably Scarfed. Yeah. Or, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, either Scarfed or Focus Sash, because it is pretty frail. Um Oh, we see a switch though. Oh, she does go for the switch. So she sacrificed that... the boost. Oh, well, that might be the right play. To bring in the Dracovish. So here's that drain punch that will not land because of protect. And now we see an earthquake coming in, which is going to do some massive damage. That will probably secure that KO yeah. on that Garbodor at least. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Secures the and... KO on Garbodor. And now, oh my goodness, the Dracovish is in a really tight spot right there. Yeah, luckily it's not quite. Oh well, with the hail now yeah, it is. That's a little now bit it's in range. <laughs> so now she's. So gonna yeah, have to this make is a definitely a bad here. spot. Yeah, hundred percent. She's gonna have to make a choice here because she could either go for Ficious Ren, but I'm pretty sure that Dracovish they're usually either scarfed or banded, which means you'll be locked into whatever she picks. So if she has yeah. Crunch, she can knock out the Delmize. But if she does Crunch, she can't hit the Sableye in the future. But she can hit the the Hatterene, which would be fine. Yeah, exactly. But you just really can't hit for that much damage on the Sableye, which is also rocking a Focus Sash. So it's I think you just go for I think you just go for the stab, honestly, because it does you know decent damage to pretty much everything. Yeah, we'll see. We'll we'll see what happens here. I would per me personally, I would go for the Crunch, uh, and just try to get my other Mon to continue to support me and try to push through. It might not be the best play. That that'd be the way I'd play it personally. Um, yeah, yeah. But solely considering a switch here, um, probably trying to trying to somehow activate the weakness policy on his Hatterene as a last ditch effort probably yeah and we'll see what happens brings in the uh, Hatterene again he was banded on the Delmai so maybe he was just trying to, to switch his move up or something so we do see the crunch going on Hatterene does not quite oh, secure the my. knockout so I'm going to probably say that thing is scarfed and that does look like a freeze drive which is going to be quite yeah. super effective because of its water typing so that's going to pick up the KO on the Dracovish um, and then here's an Iron Head on the uh, Vanillux, but it does have a Focus Sash, like we said before, so it's still going to live on. And I think, honestly, this is a position where it's going to be uh, it's going to be game pretty soon. Hale does oh. knock out the Hatterene, so he <laughs> ends up knocking out his own Mon here. Um, yeah, and I mean, he, he can pretty much just win from here. I mean, he brings in probably... He can bring in Sableye to Quash. I, he doesn't even really need to, though, but... Yeah. Yeah, he, he could. Um, it's going to be interesting. Uh, I think, is that Will-O-Wisp? Yeah, yeah. So that's, so that's Will-O-Wisp. So he probably Will-O-Wisp the, uh, the Scavalier just to secure the damage output on that thing to keep it under check just in case it goes crazy. Um, yeah. And then he just keeps hitting it until it knocks out. Like, I'm pretty sure that's probably what he's, he's thinking here. Um, yeah, there's a Will-O-Wisp that he clicks. Um, so again, I think this is the, the play 100% of the time. You keep that Scavalier in check. Um, it is slow. So you can just make sure its attack is dropped as much as possible with this, and then just keep attacking it until it just it just goes down. And then you also have Delmize in the back. So we'll see what, what exactly uh, the, the Will O Wisp does land, does hit the Scavalier. And you have to wonder too, had, would it have been a better option to just leave a, a Scavalier in as plus one? You know? Yeah, and it was plus one special defense if I'm not mistaken, correct? So he would have been taking very good amount of. Uh, uh, or not good amount, but like he'd be able to take a lot more of that uh, blizzard from that Vanillux. And it is rocking yeah. the leftovers, it seems. But, you know, 
after after the burn, that Ironhead did almost nothing on Sableye, so I I wouldn't hold much hope on this Escavalier to, to to pull through. I'd try to focus on that Vanillox and take it out of the way beforehand. Yeah, just try to. You're just playing for differential, I think, at this point. Yeah. Um, you take out this Vanillox. <laughs> you could potentially take out the Delmise too, maybe. Yeah, yeah, and it's like you know you've got leftover, sure, but you know you're taking hail damage. You're also taking fire damage or burn damage, yeah. so. Yep, and I think we saw a disable for the first time, uh, or at least I I saw it for the first time. And he so I think he did disable the Iron Head on that uh, Escavalier, <laughs> just making it completely useless, losing another yeah. turn, which is honestly a really big play because now you're just you're just wasting this Escavalier's precious time. You know, Escavalier could have picked up a KO on the uh, Vanillux, and now it yeah. loses that opportunity to do so. And kind honestly, of surprised to see him keep attacking here instead of going for you know potentially. Uh, a protect to just you know save that yeah vanilla. but he's yeah. probably pretty confident here that he can get the kill yeah. no but that, that that won't do enough right there here's a blizzard blizzard should be enough right here because there's no boost blizzard yep. does secure the ko so that <clears throat> will be a victory for the cuernavaca syndicals making them a six and three record holder pretty sure enough to push them into alpha division um, and knocking some people out of Alpha Division. Uh, we'll see how the rest of the matches play out uh, in the remainder uh, of the week, obviously. But that's very, very interesting. Well, wouldn't they be five and three? Uh, are they three or are they? They're they're five and two right now. So that'd be six and two. Sorry, six and two. Oh, okay. With okay. that, with this win. Yeah, impressive. Honestly, that is um, great play. I think that team like. Course. It just looks so fun to use, honestly. Like just the, <laughs> just the all the different options that that he has, you know, with yeah. Quash and just having Prankster on any team is just so valuable. Definitely, hundred percent. And honestly, that was a very well played match. Um, it seems like the Dashing Dittos might just stay in Beta Division, um, unless if you know, I don't know how the rest of these matches will play out in Alpha Division. Something crazy can happen still. So yeah, we'll see what exactly happens out here. But I'm pretty sure. Cuernavaca Cynicals just secured their way into Alpha Division. I'm almost positive of that. And I, I'm only saying that because I think I get knocked out. Um, <laughs> and uh, that's pretty much it for that battle. That was a good game from both coaches. Absolutely. Um, now, I did say this, though, before we end primetime. I did say that those that came early, we would show them the little teaser thing. Those of you guys that are still here and didn't leave, we're going to show you the teaser thing again. We posted this tweet out today. I say we, but we didn't do it. It was some random person that had the access to the Pokemon ABL account. You've been hacked. You've been hacked. <laughs> no, basically, we posted this out on Twitter today. Who wants to participate in hashtag Pokemon ABL? Question mark. Eyeball emoji. Shh, emoji, right? Now, uh, basically, this week we have a shuffle coming up. So, remember, this week we have a shuffle coming up. After this week's shuffle, we have four more prime times. One of them will already be for like the final regular season match and for the announcement of the Exceptional Content Creator Prize. That Exceptional Content Creator will be getting in uh, Elgato Stream Deck Mini along with some uh, Pokemon TCG O codes. Now, with that being said, there will also be within those four primetime matches a special announcement in, in relation to this Twitter post. So... I just want to let you guys know. Don't worry, we'll announce when the announcement is going to be, so you guys make sure to tune in. But there will be a very big announcement that hopefully you guys tune in for uh, throughout next Shuffle's prime times. So, yeah, absolutely. I'm have, excited. Do you want to hype this up? Do you know anything about it? I... <laughs> I'm not saying nothing. FBI, open <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying anything. You guys, don't, you, guys, you guys will see it when you see it. It'll happen soon. Just be excited. Be excited. Yeah, that's the, that's the best thing I can say. Be excited for it. Um, it's going to be very interesting, very fun, and it'll be here sooner than you guys expect. Now, with that being said, that's it for prime time for this week. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the battle. Make sure to watch the battle when the coaches upload them on their channel. Support the, to the coaches. Uh, watch yeah. the perspectives. Uh, if you guys saw that today's match was in Spanish from Soy, um, he subtitles all his videos. So... You guys will be able to watch what he was saying, what he was thinking, and what he was planning. And then make sure to watch Tay Chichu's side of the battle as well and find out what she was thinking, what she planned for, and, and, and what her thought process was throughout the match. Both great battlers. I hope to see great things from them in this next shuffle. And I think that's it for me. What do you have for these people, Perk? Well, as usual, 
Thank you guys so much for supporting the league. We really appreciate it. We put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears and typing into this league. And, uh, you know, we just want to see it be the best that it can be. So thank you so much for supporting us. Please go and support all the coaches. Also, don't forget to check out the hosts. I know we don't talk about ourselves much on these, but check out Curse. You can check out me if you want to. Um, you know, and, uh, yeah, just, you know, keep being awesome. We appreciate you. This trophy looks amazing, by the way. I'm just sure <laughs> it does look good. <laughs> uh, but uh, don't worry, we will be shipping the trophy out in an appropriate, safe, like box with a bunch of styrofoam protection. Yeah, like, pretty much the way it was shipped to us, basically. Curse will hand deliver it. I will. I, I will drive to your house and deliver it <laughs> across the ocean. I will cross the ocean on my car in this underwater tunnel that we have created. Um, the ABL tunnel. <laughs> the ABL tunnel. Anyways, without any further delay, everybody, thank you so much for watching. My name is Chris Shaka. That guy over there is Perk Hayes. Make sure to watch the battles this weekend. And peace. Take it easy. One second. <laughs>